So you were about 12 years old when you moved here to Chatsworth with your parents. What was it like to move in? Uh, it, it wasn't such a huge shock because we were so close. We were here not every day, but most days, either wandering around in the garden or whatever we were doing, and, mm -hmm. or showing people around or looking at things, because there was a lot of stuff being discovered then. It hadn't been properly lived in for nearly 100 years. It hadn't been lived in as, as a family home for more than a few months of the year. So you've just given Chatsworth its biggest makeover in decades, if not a century. What were the most challenging parts of the project? Originally, it was dentistry. It was just the infrastructure, it was the pipes, the, you know, the water, the electrics, lighting, those sort of things. And then we realized we were going to make a mess so that we thought we would tidy up the finished product as well. And so then we also thought we knew that the visitor route was not really ideal, too many stairs, not accessible particularly for people in wheelchairs. So we added a few bits um, to the brief. Uh, and it got bigger and bigger. And what about the interiors? What were your thoughts about that? One of the first things we did when we moved here four years ago was to try to simplify the staterooms to make it easier for people to understand what these extraordinary, very grand rooms were, because they don't have a function. Uh, most rooms have a function, a dining room or a kitchen or whatever. But the staterooms are really just there to walk through. Uh, they were built in the hope and expectation that William and Mary would come and stay, which never happened. They were decorated in as grand a style as was available with the, the artist of the day uh, doing the ceilings and paintings and carving and wonderful china and so on. But they were really just display rooms. And so we put them back to as near as we could to what they would have been like in 75, 1700. Uh, and I think that we've carried on with that. We've put some more of the house back into a particular date. I understand you've done a lot of regilding outside. Can you talk about that? We have started cleaning the outside for the first time since it was built, which is 300 years ago. And we found through the historical research through our archives and actually taking paint samples from the stonework that the finials on the top of the urns and so on, the flames coming out, were originally gilded. So that is our intention. My parents had gilded the window frames on two fronts and we're going to extend that by also gilding the glazing bars. So it'll be very historically correct, or very vulgar, depending on which way you want to look at it. I think it's great. This house is built to show off. Uh, it was built to show off the people who live there, and now it's built to show off itself, because the house and the garden and the park are, are really what it's all about now. So bling is not a new concept? No. Um, it says on the south front, which was the first front, of the house that people saw when they arrived in those days, Cavendo Tutus in three foot high gold letters. Yes. And that was put there for just the same reason as Donald Trump puts Donald Trump or the Trump Tower on the top of one of his buildings. It's saying, I built this property, I'm very proud of it, I want people to know it's me living here, and uh, that's why they did it. You've been showing contemporary sculpture here for several years in the Beyond Limits exhibitions. How did that start? Henry Wyndham, my colleague in London, suggested uh, it wasn't called Beyond Limits then, but it suggested having a, an outdoor sculpture for sale exhibition, mm -hmm. which uh, Southern has been doing in Florida for a few years, uh, but they'd never done it I in the UK or in Europe. And so that was great. The Southern Biz thought it was a good idea. We thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. And that, the following year, 25 amazing pieces of sculpture arrived. There was a great big Robert Indiana love on the cascade and bright red and quite startling for, you know, this quite rather calm old garden. Yes. Um, and it startled people. Uh, it frightened people, I think, until they realized it was temporary. You've recently installed a pretty extraordinary piece by Richard Long here. Yeah, it's a piece called Cornwall Slate Line, which we've had, uh, ooh, quite a while now. Uh, we bought it uh, from Roach Court down in Wiltshire, and then it was installed in our garden in Yorkshire, where we used to live. And then we moved it to Lismore Castle in, in County Waterford in Ireland, where it stayed for about six or seven years. And during that time, Richard Long had an exhibition in the Lismore Castle Arts Gallery there, which was serendipitous. The Roach Court people came and installed it a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and it's now up next to the canal pond, and it looks fantastic. But what's it like, though, to live in a house that has 297,000 visitors a year? It's wonderful. It's really great. Uh, I mean. Chatsworth couldn't survive, or shouldn't survive, uh, without the visitors. They are the, the heartbeat of the place. Um, 
and it's great to have them. Uh, we depend on them utterly, but even if we didn't depend on them for looking after the place, to be able to share it with so many people is a real pleasure. It's the most wonderful place to be, and it's a wonderful job to have. It's such a privilege to live in the middle of this beautiful place with well, great people working with us, and it, it's in every way ideal. <laughs>